my people how are you guys doing today welcome to another exciting episode of your i can starter pack and as you know my name is chidima osigwe and um welcome <laughs> on today's episode we are going to be talking about a very interesting topic right and it is titled um the trauma of failing a paper more than once and what you can do so many at times when people not even many at times a lot of people came to my dm to congratulate me thinking that maybe my journey started today like in the other episode i mentioned that i started from ats level onto um, skills and then the professional stage it sounded so smooth right but it didn't just happen like that right so i took advantage of the two diet that we have in a year some people don't know that we have two diets in a year i can actually try to do three diets in a year but we're still back to two diets a year we have the may diet and the november diet so i took advantage of both the may diet and november diet to write my exams and to repeat the papers that i failed during my ICANN journey yes you heard that right i repeated the papers that i failed during my ICANN journey so the first time in my life in my whole life I feel that anything was during my I can journey, right? It's very much okay, right? Very, very, very much okay. It's all, it's not about failing a paper, it's all about picking yourself up and eventually passing the paper, eventually overcoming the fear, the trauma of failing a paper. Failing a paper once, failing a paper more than once, all is still part of failure, right? One thing we've not come to embrace is failure that failure is a part of the journey it's just like investing your money in a business and the business crashes what would you do would you stop investing into businesses would you pack up go to bed and cry cry if you must but after that it's what happens next that is very much important so in my journey rides or during my journey my ats journey smooth didn't fail anybody then i got to skills level hmm skills level i had four papers to write right uh, financial reporting then it was mg then um, um PSAF, that's public sector accounting and then um, one other paper i can't really remember the paper but they were all four papers then in skills level after my exemption right and funny enough i passed okay it was pm i passed pm that's performance management i passed mg smooth ride in one sitting then what happens to my financial reporting what happened to my public sector accounting and finance right so by the time i saw results i didn't see financial reporting in my head i'm like me of all people financial reporting all right let's feel you know there are some papers that when you feel you're like are these people joking you want to even call for paper and all of that but when i gave it a thought right i said that means it's not about what I know, it's about what I know that I have not done right in this paper. And then, funny enough, I went back for my financial reporting the second time and I cleared it. Guess what I did not clear the second time? My PSAF. And PSAF kept me down for like three to four diets. No, no, three diets. Don't let me exaggerate. It was three diets, right? I think it's the, it's the uh, passion for me. It was three diets. So I ended up writing my piece of um, three times, right? So the, the actual first time, the second time I wrote it with FR, that I passed financial reporting and left my piece of, and then the third time that I eventually passed my piece of, right? So what happened then was that there was a change of syllabus. And there was also a change of study pack so if i had gone into that exam this third time that i eventually passed with the same ideology with the same um, outline that was in the former syllabus i'm not sure i would have passed it the third time so i did a self-evaluation of what i was doing wrong and what I needed to do right. You know, before they would have told you in PSAP that you just needed um, one calculation. And also I can change them, compulsory question mark. There was a time that compulsory question became um, 30 marks, right? And then there was a time compulsory question became 40 marks thereabouts. So when you already fail a question of 40 marks, how, how do you want to pass the exam? When you already fail a question of 30 marks and total pass mark is 50, once you get 50, you pass. Once you don't get 50, you do not pass. And you've already failed a 30 marks question out of 50. So tell me, 
how do you want to pass so that's why i tell people once you fail a paper in i can give yourself a breather give yourself a break you have done amazing what you just need to do is go to the website when there is access to the score check your score so that you will know if you actually understand this paper you are writing when you check your score and you see a 20 20 25 30 that means you actually understand this thing when you see anything less than 20 25 that means you need to go back to the drawing board and study again you need to study you don't even understand um, what is required of you during the exam and all of that when i'm seeing 30 25 that means you already know this thing you know, but maybe it's about answering the question or maybe you just need to learn other aspects of the course that you are not taking into consideration and came out during your own particular diet so that also affects in a way okay so let me bring home everything that i've been saying right it's easy to say reevaluate, reevaluate, reevaluate. So, what should you do, right? I already mentioned that the moment scores are released, go and check your score so that you see what level you are at. If you actually understand the paper, but you're not putting it down properly. That was also an issue for a friend of mine. When he eventually checked his score, he realized that he understands this thing. He even taught me SFM. Finally, when I was writing my professional exam, he taught me SFM and I passed. And the particular diet I passed SFM, he had to even rewrite SFM. And then by the time he did the re-evaluation, he realized that he understands this course, he understands this paper, but what's going on is the way he has been writing it in his exam. And people will tell you different stuffs about different papers. Some people will tell you that read only calculation for this paper. Some will tell you read only the theory for this particular paper i would say read everything i wrote sfm once because i had both the calculation aspect even though my calculation aspect was not 100 percent i had the theory aspect as well and the moment i saw the number six question it was a theory question and english is hard but english is simple right so i quickly went to the question attended to it before i came to struggle with that number one that has more of the marks okay so different strokes for different folks i would say learn the calculation questions and also have an idea of possible theory questions that may come out during the exam check your score to know where you are at give yourself extra time to study so if you are reading in group and it is affecting you you can read in group to take in more topics when your friends explain it in group but also ensure that you have your personal study time then for some people it's the personal study time that works for you but still move around to see what's happening within your friends what they are reading you, it's just it might just be a five minute discussion with your friends that might save you during the exam that happens to me as well i don't even have so much friends like that but at the lecture center where i was studying at right i just took my time and um, found people that were reading in groups i read with them they don't necessarily have to be your friends but you guys are writing the same exam it just means that you guys have the same goal so find people that you guys want to achieve the same goal and roll with them i'm not saying make friends for a particular purpose and ghost on them later but no you're, you guys know that you're on a, a journey right and you guys met there for that particular purpose it's easier for them to understand what you're passing through especially if you are resetting a paper if you meet someone that is also resetting a paper or restart the paper once or twice and eventually pass the person can share with you his or her experience and that can also help you pass your exam these little little details have made people um, receipt papers and also have saved people from receipting a particular paper even my case study paper that I had to write twice just because of this simple detail I was reading with uh, my group of friends right and then um, someone mentioned to me that uh, let's quickly look at this case study that um, he understood this and this and this but because we felt that case study we we'll just wait for pristine analysis and we'll just cram it we'll just go and pour it that's how we'd not listen to five minutes ten minutes discussion that would have saved us on examination day voila result came out we all had to write the paper again so pay attention to these little details they can save you receiving a paper all right so i mentioned that if for any reason you have to receipt a paper it can be disheartening it can be very disheartening you may be sad you may cry over it and all of that 
uh, please just move on at the end of the day. Pick up yourself and move on. You are not the only one that is receiving a paper once or twice. I reset my papers, um, at least two papers. I reset two papers three, three times, but for the other ones, I passed them at um, one sitting. Whereas we also have people that did not have to receipt any paper at all. Even as slim as 50 on the dots, they just got their 50 and they left. Some even got 51 on the dots like that and they were able to pass, right? So it's very disheartening. It can make you feel down. By the end of the day, you have to dust yourself and climb a little higher. You know that at the end of the day, you want to have ACA at the back of your name. So why not just give yourself a breather and attack ICANN again and let's conquer ICANN this time. So I'll be waiting to hear your success story next time you sit for your ICANN examination. If you want someone to read through with you or I also did the feedback um, process when I was writing. So when, let's say I study a particular topic, I go to my group of friends, I intentionally want to share with them what I learned on that particular paper because it helps it stick in my head. This is different from your secondary school days where you are looking for first position. There is no first position here except if you want to be prize winner. And if you even want to be prize winner, the more you share, the more it sticks, the more you will be able to become prize winner so if you want to be prize winner self that's on you but there's no first position here the moment the, mo the more you share the more that topic that you have learned sticks into your memory all right so you can practice that you don't forget reevaluate yourself study with like-minded people share what you have read with your friends and also listen for what they have to share about what they have read ask questions ask questions i also had a friend that any topic i have read i'll discuss with the person over the phone all the person just needs to do is listen for me to share what i have to share right even if the person is not an accountant you can give the person your study pack to say please cross check this for me um just listen to what i have to say as if you are making a presentation in your office you know at the end of the day that your professional certification is also to help you stand out at your place of work by the time they promote you do you want to get your promotion without having presentation skills? So the moment you're able to communicate like this, all these little, little communication, it also helps your presentation skills. So I'll be looking forward to hearing your success story when you eventually pass that paper that is holding you down. You're bigger than your struggles. Go and conquer. Once again, my name is Chidima Osigwe. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Oh, subscription is free. Subscribe to my channel and share this video special shout out to weeks sanctuary for sponsoring me this amazing week as they always do till i come your way next time on another exciting episode comment i'm waiting for your comments bye